The shuttle Atlantis has developed a glitch just moments before it was scheduled to lift off. CNN correspondent Tom Intier is covering the story and joins us now with an update. Tom. Bob, under normal conditions, a minute and a half ago, Atlantis would have blasted off from 39A at the Kennedy Space Center, but it is still on the ground. They do have a problem. The problem is with the crew cabin itself and with one of the vent controllers. We heard uh, on the loop a few moments ago the discussion of trying to clear it out several times. I'm taking it to close. The talk back is barber pole. I'm holding it closed. The talk back is remaining barber pole. I'm releasing the switch now. And the talk back is still barber pole. Barber pole is uh, NASA talk for it's not going anywhere right now. Barber pole is an indicator on the uh, panel inside the orbiter that there is a problem. CNN's John Zarella joins us now from the Kennedy Space Center. John, uh, how are they going to work this problem out? Well, Tom, what they did after they went through those uh, gyrations there of trying to open and close the, uh, the vent valve, what happened was that the light indicating in the cabin that the vent valve was closing was working, but then the light indicating that the vent valve was closed was not working. So what they plan to do now is to do what they call some uh, normal cabin leak checks to see if the cabin is indeed pressurized. The uh, valves have to be able to open and close on a scent of the orbiter in order to maintain the proper cabin pressure for the astronauts. The other uh, concern might well be the, uh, the weather here at the Cape. It's starting to cloud up to the west over the shuttle landing strip. There's some black clouds out there. So uh, the longer they stay in this hole, the more difficult it might be to uh, get Atlantis off the ground. In the white room, the uh, Lockheed engineering staff, the technicians are still up there. They're working uh, uh, with uh, ground control to try and clear the problem and, of course, working with the astronauts on board. So again, at, uh, at this point, we are holding at the T-9 mark, and we're not sure how long that hold will uh, stay in place, and they are also sending weather balloons up. It's much better at the Cape today. The winds have died down. There are no thunderstorms or clouds. As you can see, it's a, a beautiful sky behind uh, Pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. So uh, they say they have 0% chance of violation of the weather constraints, the stricter weather constraints that were put in place after the Challenger accident. So a little over a minute and a half now uh, before this nine-day mission is on off the ground and underway. The uh, majority of the flight uh, after they deploy the TDRA satellite will be taken up with medical experiments that uh, they are starting to run on a regular basis on these flights. They want to get some kind of an idea of how the astronauts are affected by long-term duration in space. The liquid hydrogen tank is reported to be at flight pressure. There was a minor problem overnight with uh, another piece of hardware, but it was one minute deemed and not to be a problem for this flight. It was something that's not going to be used. Under a minute now. T minus 45 seconds coming up on a go for auto sequence start. This is the 42nd flight in the mission in, in the program and also the first uh, in about six 35. years where the Kennedy Space Center is a primary landing site at the end of the mission. Yeah, so there's a very good chance unless we have bad go weather that we start. will have a landing once again at the Kennedy Space Center. control of the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20. 15, 12, 10, 9, 8, 7. We have a go for main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1. And liftoff of the Space Shuttle Atlantis on a nine-day mission to deploy the Tedris communication satellite. This Atlantis mobile program. Roger roll, Atlantis. Houston's now controlling. Maneuver complete, rolling Atlantis and crew heads down and on the proper heading. Engines at 104%. Engines throttling back now to 81%. Engines throttling down and holding well. All systems performing well. Atlantis accelerating through the dense lower altitudes. Altitude now 18,000 feet, velocity 1,000 feet per second.
Atlantis beginning to approach the region of maximum dynamic pressure. Engines throttling down now to 67%. Three engines at 67. And three engines throttling up. Atlantis, go ahead, throttle up. Roger, go ahead, throttle up. Three engines now running at 104% rated thrust. All systems performing well. Good hydraulics, good electrical systems. Altitude now 68,000 feet. Velocity 2,500 feet per second. Atlantis now nine nautical miles downrange. Time one minute 35 seconds. Atlantis, com check on UHF. Loud and clear. Flight controllers watching for solid rocket booster burnout. Time, 1 minute, 56 seconds. Chamber pressure tailing off now. So the solid rockets have fallen and away and are starting their descent back into the ocean where they'll be retrieved. Atlantis now, now operating on the power of its three main engines. Uh, everything going well so far into the mission. Uh, they are going to uh, head to a spot about 183 miles above the equator uh, where they will be orbiting for the next nine days. And again, uh, they're going to, uh, the primary objective of this flight is to deploy the tracking and data relay satellite that will occur later in the day. So the Atlantis crew is on the way to space and they will remain there for the next week or so. Uh, we expect uh, to know later in the day about the uh, deployment of this satellite. This, again, is the most important thing because it provides a link-up, total link-up, for the shuttle program. We, of course, will have continuous coverage throughout this nine-day mission of Atlantis Sorry, here on CNN.